window shopping for romance is never a good idea. You can window shop for one night stand and that that works, but not for romance as in long term romantic relationships. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Soulful Intuitive. As you see, today is a bright, shiny day, which is very odd for Vancouver, but we are taking it in and uh, ignoring the fact that it's really cold. But I'm really happy to be sharing this beautiful ocean with you. Uh, that view has inspired me and my partner to use as a backdrop, which makes lighting uh, for this video, A Living Hell, because it's very difficult to outdo or to uh, have enough lighting uh, on me when there's so much light coming from the background. But it is in keeping with the theme of our channel, The Soulful Intuitive, because water is uh, associated with intuition. So today we are going to talk about love and romantic partners. And the reason why I want to talk about that is because I had a new client a few days ago who uh, is a friend of this group of clients that come to me. And he's almost 40. And when we were, when usually I have a new client, I like to get to know them. So I ask about their job and uh, where they live and where they went to university and what they do for fun, hobbies. Um, and I opened the door for them to tell me anything else that they want to tell me. And one of the things that we got into talking, which is the usual topic, is relationships. And I asked him what kind of a person uh, in his case, a girl, is he into? And then he just told me that no one's ever asked me that question before. So, so I thought this would be a good topic because just because it is apparent to some of us that we need to have an idea of what we're looking for, um, it is possible that a lot of people out there don't know that little helpful tip so when we're going grocery shopping, what do we do? We make a list. When we are shopping in general, let's say we're clothes shopping, we know exactly what we're looking for. We just don't go to the stores going from aisle to aisle and department to department looking to see if uh, anything jumps out at us. And sometimes we do, that's called window shopping, but window shopping is different. Window shopping for romance is never a good idea. You can window shop for one night stand and that that works, but not for romance as in long term romantic relationships. So I thought that this would be a good topic to cover and to also maybe spark um, curiosity for some people if you're very young and you haven't really, uh, sorry, I meant to say ignite a spark of curiosity for the ones who are very young and for the ones who maybe have always been in one uh in a, in a relationship with someone for a very long time they've never had an opportunity to really dig deep and find out about their own needs and their own soul to see what is it that they want after let's say 20 30 for some people 40 years of just one person and uh and and after that now they're back in the market but they're clueless they don't know what is it that they're looking for so we're gonna start with very simple things for example some we, we start with like the psyche so let's say if you if you're an introvert then are you looking for another introvert or are you looking for an extrovert if you're shy, do you want outgoing or do you want someone who's just as shy or maybe not as shy, but on the shyer side? If you like outdoors, do you want someone who like outdoors? 
do you want someone who um, is exactly like you or you want someone who is different than you? Um, do you want someone from the same race? Do you want someone from the same religion, if you have one? Do you want someone with the same spiritual beliefs? Do you want someone with the same political beliefs um, or leniencies? Do you want someone um, uh, uh, of the same um, socioeconomic status? Those are all the questions that we need to ask ourselves because every single one of these questions narrow down the field and bring our um, focus into a sharper focus so we know exactly what we're looking for so then when we come across that and we're like yeah that one and and that's the power of attention that's the power of intention and together when we intend to go after a certain quality and focus on it then it'll be easier and it'll be more accurate but if we don't know what we're looking for so we are basically putting our possibilities in the hands of randomness and then the chances are that we are going to attract someone maybe and i'm not sure about that so i'm just going to put it out there we're going to attract someone who just is trauma bonding with us maybe if let's say we are a minority and we have experienced discrimination and that's just like resonates really really strongly inside of us then maybe we'll just um universe will bring someone that we can bond with on that note but it's really important to have an idea about what direction to look and what to look for when it comes to anything uh let alone romance and romantic partners so for example when i was a lot younger my long list was very vague actually because now when i look back and i read it um it makes me laugh but also it's part of being very young where you're not very experienced and maybe your understanding of the world is not very sophisticated so my my list was tall and broad shoulders very like you know on the physical side because I thought that that was the definition of relationship or romance was what meets the eyes. And as I got older and did a lot more soul digging and a lot more work inwardly, then I came to realize that what meets the eyes is important maybe for a minute or a month or a year. But what's more important is what meets your soul. So I added kindness to my list. I added compassion to my list. I added loyalty to my list. And not just loyalty in terms of, you know, being um, committed to our relationship, but just as a loyal person, loyal to their friends, loyal to their families, loyal to their studies, to their hobbies, just loyalty. I added sincerity. I added sensitivity. I added sense of humor. What I added when I was a lot younger was maybe a certain level of education or like, and by that I mean degrees. Because you can be very educated without degrees and you can be very educated or have a, very, a lot of degrees but maybe not very educated. And what I had when I was younger, for example, was sharp focus on things that, like, overall, it didn't matter because then when I did order and when the universe did deliver for me, 
and all those physicalities or the physical factors that I had put in my list did not bring me the satisfaction. And that's why they say, be careful what you wish for. So from that painful experience, I came back to the drawing room and I revised my wish list. And it didn't come very quickly because my wisdom, my understanding of me did not come very quickly. It took a lot of uh, uh, books to read and it took a lot of classes to take and it took traveling and it took many breakups here and there with people. It took watching certain movies and reading certain poetries and talking to a lot of wiser and sometimes older people to understand what it means to be in a healthy, adult, yet human relationship. Because we have to add the word human because by just putting that little adjective, we make it real. Because as long as we're on this planet, and call ourselves humans, we should know that we're not perfect and we are here to learn new things and we are here to work on um, being more evolved and education in every way possible so we can have a better understanding of ourselves, the world around us, and other people. So maybe when you are... Uh, looking uh, out there either on the apps or maybe at work or just doing a little doodling on your own and writing down things that are important to you maybe you should just think and meditate and 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 then come up with things that you really are into because maybe you had a partner who was insensitive so from that you learn I want a sensitive person. Maybe you had a partner who was a narcissist. So then you're like, no, I don't want that. I want someone who has empathy and compassion. I want someone who is not afraid to say that they are sorry or someone who is not afraid to take responsibility for their actions. Maybe you had a relationship with someone who was very logical, but not a lot of heart. So now you can say, I want someone who's heart and mind together. Maybe you had someone who was just all heart, very emotional, very um, volatile maybe, because as, as important as heart is, it needs structure. So maybe this time you want someone who is a bit more balanced, maybe someone who's not all emotions, but you know, mental and emotional. Maybe you had someone who was very stingy. So now this time around, you know that you want someone who's a Jenner. Maybe you have someone who was overtly sexual. That made you feel like you're lacking. Made you feel like you had to perform or you had to go out of your way to meet their sexual needs. So maybe this time... The person you're you're looking for should be someone who's maybe not of such high libido. Or maybe you had someone who had no libido. So maybe this time you're like, I want someone who's more sexual. Maybe yeah, yeah, you were dating someone who was just a tad boring. So this time you want someone who's a little bit more interesting or a little bit more adventurous. So the importance of this list, as long as it can be, is that it gives you an opportunity to get to know yourself and to look at your experiences to your past relationships. Or even if you know how to one, to just check in with your heart and see what really makes your heart um, open up, what makes you excited, what gives you the butterflies, and, and see what gets you um, want to further go further more what what, like what makes you uh hopeful what like all those positive energies but if you think about something and it's not necessarily giving you that vibe so maybe it's time to think about it again maybe it's time to 
uh, they'll see someone, maybe uh, maybe talk to a friend who knows you really well, maybe talk to your therapist, maybe uh, do some plant medicine to get to know yourself. I and mean, there's so many tools to dive deep within ourselves and get to know ourselves. But the most important thing is after you did the work, then you're going to be a lot more clear. However, sometimes the universe surprises us for better because, for example, I thought that I was always going to end up with someone a lot older than me. And that didn't happen. And now when I look back, I realize that the reason why I put in older is because I needed that sense of security and the sense of maturity um, that sometimes comes with age. But what I didn't know that you can be very young and mature too, and you can be old and immature as well. Also, the experiences that I had by that point were done on purpose because usually when you're younger and you're dating someone older, that older person gives you all of their attention. And I I was younger and I needed a lot of attention and I needed a lot of reassurance. And sure enough, I had figured it out that that is that need that I had was being addressed by someone who had a bit more experience than me. Also, it's very possible that if we had a difficult relationship with either um, of our parents, either mom or dad or both, then we weren't too f- fulfilled those needs that were not met when we were growing up. And, you know, you want to call it daddy issues or mommy issues. And that's one of the reasons why some people usually go for uh, people who are older than them. But there is no recipe when it comes to age because age is just a number. And as taboo as it is, for example, for uh, women to go after younger uh, men, it is completely socially accepted for men to go after younger women. So we just have to ask ourselves, why is it that even women cringe when they see another woman with a younger guy and they don't realize that these are all social programming and it doesn't mean anything. When two souls meet, they can be the same age and they could be so many years apart. But if their lists and if their... Um, Togetherness brings growth, brings serenity, brings peace, brings harmony, then that's all that they need. They don't need anybody else's approval. And But we justify, for example, an older gentleman going for a younger woman. And even in that union, there are needs. Usually the younger um, lady um, maybe wants that financial security or um, maybe wants that elderly um, advice, the guidance that maybe they never got, maybe they are attracted to accomplishment, to maturity, so on and so forth, or maybe they're just really looking to have a stable father figure for their kids. Um, So plenty of reasons, and there is really no room for judgment when it comes to finding someone that makes your heart sing. And Um, Unlike what some people say, a romantic union is maybe has a sexual factor, but it's not about sex. Because I was talking to one of my clients who was a very wise, wise person. And he was, him and I were talking about his current partner. And he was, and he's a very genuine person. And he was telling me that you know, there is a difference between uh, choosing for someone to be your partner and to be your uh, boyfriend, girlfriend. Um, And there is a difference between that and just uh, having a one night stand or uh, like a regular person that maybe you, uh, another adult that you get together with and have some fun with because that is has its own definition, which is the union for, let's say, two adults that come together for fun, for adult fun, is 
very much about sex and is about the what meets the eyes and the immediate attraction, which is usually physical. And sure, maybe you're going to have a very hot and um, a hot and a steamy experience with that person, but that doesn't mean that the person that you choose based on a long list of things to be your partner for many years or a lifetime has to have that amount of hotness and steaminess because that's not the point because the point of being with someone is not about the time that you spend in the bedroom or the couch or wherever that level of intimacy although is important is not necessarily why people find harmony and find home with another human being and, and marry them or call them long-term partners. It's because when you are in the presence of that person, you become very much yourself. It's a level of comfort. It's a level of familiarity. It's a level of trust. It's a level of respect. There's so much more that goes into settling down with someone and, and calling that person your life partner. And the, re the reason why I'm using the term life partner is because um, I'm trying to not be stuck in the past because husband and wives are, have been around forever. And as we go forward, we should come up with terms that include everyone and every level of union, every kind of union. And that's why I use the term partner. And uh, that's, um, it's going to be like that even more and more as we progress and we change our understandings of what marriages used to be about, which for, you know, not even that long ago was about knowing who's a father and who's a mother and who brings the money into the union. Um, that's why in a lot of cultures, families didn't want to have daughters because when the daughters uh, were married off, they had to pay uh, a substantial amount of money and they didn't want to lose that money because it was all sort of contracts and it was a financial contract. But we're not there yet. We're not there anymore where we will dawn. We understand ourselves a lot better. A lot of things have changed and yet some things have stayed the same. However, I digress. I uh, am going to end this segment with just the, the, the what came to me when I was talking to my client, which was just because it was so obvious for me or maybe it's so obvious for so many other people when they make certain decisions, like in this case was about knowing exactly who we're looking for and the qualities that were, are important to us. That doesn't mean that everybody knows that. Like I, um, for example, my brother um, is is very good with finances, and um, and I wasn't. So when we wanted to buy our first apartment, I we were living somewhere, uh, renting, and our landlord wanted to sell us that particular unit and it was within our budget it was a very old unit and uh, because we had decided that this is as far as we can afford we weren't even considering going around and looking at other places uh, because the area that we were renting was considered um, like a very um, in terms of affordability was not very affordable and what I told my brother that, yeah, this is the offer that my landlord gave us and we're thinking about it. And he was like, well, have you, have you seen any other units? And I said, no, because I am, um, we just, we can't afford it. And then what seemed to be so obvious to him, which was to go around and look at, you know, 10, 20, 100 other apartments before you make a decision was not obvious for me. So... It's fair to say that when things are obvious to us, maybe it's not obvious to other people, and it's always important to share what comes to you naturally or maybe something that you learned at home from your parents or from your friends or at school or in books or in classes. 
and share that with others because like so many times I'm talking to someone about like let's say a story or um, like a political issue or or a school of thought and uh, and these very smart very accomplished people look at me and are like I don't know what it is and I'm very much like that when it comes to sports I have no idea what's happening uh, in the world of sports I really never really had any interest in in sports and I know it's very important to other people and. Uh, my friends laugh at me because I am clueless. So if I'm, I, I mean, I know soccer only because I grew up with brothers, one particular brother who loved soccer and he followed soccer. And uh, so I know the game of that, the rules of that game, but anything else, I'm clueless. Um, and uh, so that's why I really appreciate it. And my friends who are very sporty educate me about the world of sport. And, uh, and I'm just very much into relationships of all kinds and uh, and our uh, our soul and what keeps our soul warm at night and what our soul needs. So uh, so I have to be reminded at times that just because I had the interest in that field and I went for it, uh, that doesn't mean that others have the same uh, amount of um, understanding of it. So. That's why I started this channel with my partner because I am very much interested in sharing what I have learned so far because no matter how many uh, people who value uh, connect connectedness between humans and soul purposes and self-help matters, no matter how many how many of them we have out there, uh, we will find someone that we like to listen to. And sometimes it's a guru and sometimes it's someone on YouTube who has not more than 20 followers. And that is okay because it doesn't matter what they're saying. Sometimes it's important that what they're saying is coming from a certain person with a certain tone of voice with a certain way of enunciation and with a certain way of mannerism. And because we resonate with them, then we hear them. For the same reason why parents with everything that they have in their heart, which is almost always what they want the best for their kids, they say a lot of things to their kids and the kids don't hear it. But then if the kids hear it from a total stranger, it becomes Bible. So it doesn't mean that the parents don't know what they're saying or, or what they're saying is not important. It just means that all of us need to find that one person or a group of people that we vibe with and what they say that lands on our heart. And sometimes I wonder uh, what the world would have been if we didn't have internet if we didn't have this way of connecting with each other, because that is by itself a miracle and it could be used to just really evolve humanity and evolve in every way possible and not just in self-help, but in every way possible. I have an electrician. Uh, we have an electrician. We came to get to know him last year and this man just, is uh, he's an angel he came to our house and i was watching him work and it i just realized very quickly that he works like a person who has training and not like just an electrical electrical training he worked like a professional like someone with a couple of degrees and then i asked him i said can you tell me a bit more about yourself and he said that yeah he was a an electrical engineer in in the end and he went to australia and there uh, got his masters in computer um science and then he came to vancouver and it just oh, uh, was 2008 which was the financial collapse and uh recession so he ended up going to a trade school and get his uh, degree in uh, just being an electrician. So I don't, I don't know exactly what it's called, but uh, so like he had to have his um, um, diploma so he can 
start working as an electrician because that was good money and was the jobs were available for him then. So between um, last year and this year, we got to know him even more. And he just randomly sent me a few videos, um, YouTube videos. And the, the, these three videos, uh, if you only look at the title, they were they were very different. One was about archaeology. And the other one was a Sadhguru, who is an Indian guru, uh, having a debate with a another guy that is not interested in spirituality. And he called himself, he is a realist. And he only looks into data and logic. And there was another video that was uh, between a, a guy who was a linguist um, and another podcaster. And every single one of these videos had the same message because they were just talking about how uh, humanity is out of balance. And in terms of masculine, feminine, yin and yang, we have been off balance for, for quite, quite a long time. And for example, how squares mean feminine, triangle means feminine, but rectangles mean masculine. And then how the building went from pyram pyramidicals to like boxes and and uh, how mind is masculine and heart is feminine. And like every single one of these long videos had the same message that we need to come to balance. We need to embrace femininity. We need to realize that there is a reason why in every ancient culture there was there there was symbol and the symbolisms involved with um, portraying portraying feminine and masculine and not biological femininity and masculinity, but them as abstract concepts and and in the world that we live in right now, we, we just automatically give so much credit to people who appear to be very masculine, very take charge, very mind, very logic, very data, very aggressive, very competitive, all these qualities that our society or societies have come to value. And in return, there are so many feminine qualities that are looked at as weak and as um, just garbage as something to not even consider as voodoo, as, um, old, as icky, as feminine in a, in a, in a bad way, as, um, as out of this world, as, um, just as no value. And um, and and now we know that why we are where we are, why our world, our planet Earth, uh, has become the way it has become. Why the trees are cut and the air is polluted, and why is it that the less than point zero one percent of the population of this planet have all the wealth and the rest are struggling, and why? everything is becoming more and more difficult to fix because of that uh, off-balance approach and uh, that off-balanceness of uh, the way that we have been and we continue to be. And that's why it's so important for us to build that balance within us and that's very important when we're also looking for a partner. Because if we are out of balance, then we're going to crave a partner who is going to be out of balance, but in the opposite way. For example, if we're very emotional, then we usually tend to attract people who aren't. And if we are very shy, but not because of our wiring, but because we have no self-esteem, and we're afraid to be heard, then we're gonna attract someone who is maybe going to be on the narcissistic side. So that balance that we need to 
to work on every day and every night until the day we die is going to, in, 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 as a consequence, make this world a, a more balanced place. And the suffering uh, as, a, as a result will drop and then people will see the difference outside of them because they already have fixed the world inside of them. So that's it. That was a longer episode that we were probably going to cut in a few pieces. And I know that usually as the spring comes, a lot of um, us out there, uh, will we, we start thinking about finding a partner, finding a fling, maybe start something new. And uh, I hope that this video will come handy and will be uh, useful to those of you who are interested in uh, watch more than meet the eyes and on things that are unseen, but definitely are at work, like law of attraction, like the the importance of intention and attention. Thank you very much. And I will talk to you very soon.